we were just looking at how to use derivatives and integration in order to work with displacement, velocity, and acceleration. I told you a trick that if you start with a displacement graph or a displacement, if you want to know the velocity, then it's like going down, you take the derivative. See, this is this. This velocity is the derivative of displacement. And furthermore, the acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Or it's the second derivative of displacement, if you feel like it. And conversely, if you want to go up, so to speak, you can go up in a graph and take the integral. So let's look at this with a practical question here. So here, you're launched in a rocket, and the rocket moves with this velocity. So the velocity is given by this. Velocity as a function of time is equal to the time squared minus t minus 2, and that's measured in meters per second. That's what this tells you here. So that means you're actually flying around in some sort of rocket here. So I don't know, maybe that's uh, this is a rocket. How does a rocket look? It looks something like this, doesn't it? With um, some sort of thing like this right here with these... Uh, you know, those are the thrusters here, so it's flying through the air. And so this right here, this is you. So you could actually be, you know, sitting right here in the, in the rocket. So if you're going in this rocket right here, you're accelerating really, really fast, and there you go. So you have your velocity as a function of time. So that means, you know, at a time t equals zero, you could figure this out, because maybe you're asked that. That's a common question that's asked, you know, is what's the velocity, uh, what's the initial velocity? What that means is what's the velocity at time t equals zero, which means in this equation, replace t with zero. So zero squared minus zero, and then you'd say, oh, my velocity is negative two meters per second. That's kind of weird. That would mean that your initial velocity is sort of going opposite in direction to the way you're flying, but oh well. Um, here we're asking what's your velocity after 60 seconds? By the way, this isn't entirely realistic. There's a lot of factors that haven't been taken into account, but oh well, this doesn't really matter. The point is just to take a look at this and work with an equation and try to figure out what to do. So here we're asked, what's your velocity after 60 seconds? Well, we're given a graph of velocity. So that means there's nothing really exciting to do except for just calculate it. We want V at 60, you know, velocity at 60 seconds. Well, that's just 60 squared minus 60 minus 2. That's all we have to do. Now, 60 squared, that's like saying 6 squared, which is 36, and adding two zeros to it. So that means in that case, it would be, let's see, that would be 3,600. Now we do minus 60 and minus 2. That's all we'd have to do. So that would give us, what would that be, 3... 5 should be 3, 8. So that would be our, um, this would be this in meters per second. So this would be in meters per second. This is actually extremely fast. I mean, if you know about meters and seconds, this is, this is around 3.5 kilometers every second. I mean, that's really fast. In fact, uh, you can take a look at this and say, well, the speed of sound is around 331 meters per second. So if I took this number right here, and if I divided it by, so let's see, 3538, and I divided that by around, I mean, the speed of sound, it depends where you are and what the pressure is, but the speed of sound is around 331 meters per second. So that's 10. So this is roughly, this is roughly Mach 10. That means you're going 10 times the speed of sound. So you're going, uh, you know, the, the, that's how fast sound goes, is Mach 1, so to speak. So you're going 10 times the speed of sound. So uh, you're going pretty darn quick here. So I don't know how realistic that is, but because uh, that would be a heck of an acceleration. In fact, that's why I decided to ask you this. So what is your acceleration after 60 seconds? You know, how would you feel if you're in that rocket ship? Well, let's take a look at that. We have a graph of, uh, not graph, we have a velocity, and we're asked for acceleration. So if you go back to this little trick, we have velocity, and we want acceleration. So acceleration is, well, we're going down, so we take the derivative. Or if you remember it like this, acceleration is the derivative of velocity versus time. In other words, to take the acceleration, you have to find an equation for velocity and take the time derivative for it. Thankfully, we have that. We have an equation for velocity. So I'm going to just say that then. So acceleration is going to be dv dt. In other words, 
You know, take the equation for v, take the time derivative. What will that be? Well, I need the equation for v, which is right here. So that means I'm going to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of t squared is going to be the 2 comes in front, so 2 times t to the power of 1. This is minus t to the 1, so it becomes minus 1 times t to the 0, which is just a 1. And this one here disappears, goes poof. All right, well, that's easy. So that means then a of 60. I should have actually been a little bit more careful. You know what I should have said here? I should have said a of t. That is more accurate. You know, acceleration as a function of time is this. That means acceleration at 60 seconds, because that's what I'm asking for, is just 2 times 60 minus 1. So in that case then, that means the acceleration is, well, 2 times 60 is 120, so minus 1, that's 119 meters per second squared. So that would be my answer here. So this was that one. This is this one. You might want to know, well, what is that? Well, um, it turns out that the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, in other words, 1g, that's 9.81. That's this number. So if I take my 119, which is the acceleration I'm feeling in my rocket, divide that by 9.81, we can say that that is around 12 times the force of gravity. So for those who like uh, to do things in units of Gs, you're going around 12G. Which, by the way, um, unless you've got a G suit on and you have a lot of training, you're very likely completely passed out. Most people can only handle a few Gs before they pass out. Now if you have training, uh, you can actually survive a little bit more. Not survive, but you can stay awake for longer. Uh, what happens, I mean, I've been in a, one of these G machines before. Um, so these are these, uh, it's called a centrifuge. So what they do is they spin you around faster and faster and faster until you eventually pass out. And of course, with some training, you can actually stay awake for a little bit longer. You can stay awake to like six or maybe even nine Gs. Um, and that's kind of gross, by the way. Um, the trick to staying awake is you have to really, really make your, uh, you want blood to stay in your brain. That's the whole idea is you want to stay, uh, keep blood in your brain. So to do that, you, it sounds a bit gross. You have to pretend you have to go to the bathroom, like you're going number two, like you're, you know, taking a crap. So if you do that, you have to really just really push like you would be doing that. Believe it or not, that keeps you awake longer. So I don't know if you were really expecting that from a question about uh, math, all of a sudden learning how to stay awake longer in a centrifuge in case you're ever in that situation. But in case you're going for pilot training for the military, or I don't know, maybe you want to be an astronaut, those things are important. You want to stay awake longer. Um, so 12 Gs, you're very likely passed out. Most people would be. Okay, fine. What's your distance traveled in the first 30 seconds? Well, I need to find distance, but I've only got an equation for velocity. So again, how do I do that? I can go back and trust this little trick here. The little trick was that if I'm given a velocity time sort of situation and I want the distance traveled or the displacement, then I have to go up. So I take the integral. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take the integral of my equation for V. So that means my distance traveled then, so my distance traveled, which is s, my displacement, you could say s of t, will be the integral from, well, 0 to 30, because I want the first 30 seconds. This is going to be a definite integral. And I want to do the equation for v of t. And of course, I don't do dx. In this case, I do dt. So what this tells me is take the equation for velocity as a function of time and take the time integral for it. So this is how we write this notation. So in this case, then, it would be the integral from 0 to 30 of, well, what's my equation? The equation is t squared minus t minus 2. So I'll do that here. So that means it's t squared minus t minus 2, all that dt. In other words, I take the time integral. Seems a bit redundant to always put the dt, but that's in case I had other variables going on. This, this then comes in to be really important. So let's actually start evaluating this. So s of t, in other words, s at the displacement at any time, is going to be given by, well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I'm technically not finding s of any t. I'm finding the displacement at 30 seconds. That's actually really what I'm doing here. So s at 30, you know, the displacement in the first 30 seconds 
is going to be given by all this, right? Because if it was s of t, then I would have zero to whatever t I'm looking at. So in this case, the displacement at 30 seconds, well, how do I find that? I take the antiderivative of this one. So let's see, t squared becomes, remember now, it becomes one power more, so it becomes t cubed over three. And this is minus t to the one, so it becomes minus t to the two over two. And this is minus two, well, right now it's like t to the zero, so it becomes t to the one over one, so that's just this. And I have to evaluate this, from 0 to 30. Okay, fine. That means then that s of 30 is going to be equal to, well, I have to just evaluate this. So, well, the good news is evaluating it at 0 is going to be easy. Everything cancels out. So normally I would do this whole thing at 30 minus this whole thing at 0. But at 0, it's just 0. So that's easy because 0 here, 0 here, 0 here makes this whole thing disappear. So what I can really then just say is it's 30 cubed over 3 minus 30 squared over 2 minus 2 times 30. Great. Now I'm going to try to do this by hand. I think we can. So we have s of 30 equals, well, 30 squared is going to be like, uh, sorry, 30 cubed. It's going to be like 3 cubed, um, which would be 27. But then I have to add three zeros. It's like, you know, it's like 10 cubed. So I would, that would be, what would that be? 27,000 all that divided by 3. Minus, now 30 squared is going to be the same thing as 3 squared, which is 9, but then add two zeros to it, so 900 over 2, minus 2 times 30, which is 60. And of course, you could use a calculator for this, but uh, I'll see. I think we can do it by hand. I think this will work out. 27,000 divided by 3, well, 27 divided by 3 is 9, so that just makes it then 9,000. And 900 divided by 2 is 450. And then we have minus 60. Well, that's nice. Uh, now, 900 minus 450, this right here, uh, that gives me, what's that, 8550. Five, so I have this minus 60. And that gives me then that finally my displacement after 30 seconds is going to be da, 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 8490, I think. Yeah, that'll be that in meters. That'll be by my displacement, which is around, you know, that's roughly 8.5 kilometers. So I've gone pretty far in only 30 seconds. Because remember, in 60 seconds, already my acceleration is 12 G. So just in the, in the first half of that, I've already gone 8.5 kilometers. You could actually then try to calculate how long have you gone in 30 seconds. Well, then just, uh, sorry, how long have you traveled in the 60 seconds? That'd be easy, just do s of 60. In other words, evaluate it from zero to 60 instead, which would be then 60 cubed over three minus 60 squared over two minus two times 60. You'd have a much, much larger value. It would be more than double. So that's why I think this is pretty interesting stuff. You can solve all sorts of crazy motion questions uh, as long as you just remember how to deal with velocity versus time as opposed to acceleration versus time as opposed to displacement versus time. And again, I think this little trick right here comes in really handy. If you go down, derivative, up is integral.